Hello. Um, I hope you're all well, and thank you for, for joining me on this uh, reflection. Uh, and today's topic will be about the reaction of government to the COVID pandemic, um, because I want to commit this to memory uh, in case I should forget it, or if people forget that I can go back and look here. The tide is turning. I'm thank God for that because I, I, I was afraid that it would never happen. The tide is turning and it started turning approximately at the same time as the Fauci emails have been released. In it, um, and I don't know if you have gone through it, uh, but there is a PDF online for you to view. Um, and I'll probably put a link in that so that I can, I can show it to you. Um, the Fauci emails confirm something that I've known for a long time, and that's that there was collaboration between the United States and the Wuhan Virology Institute that did leak the COVID-19 virus to the world uh, and intended to do so from the very beginning. Um, this evidence, these emails, also cement the fact that there was a deliberate attempt to study and or combine viruses, um, manipulate viruses, experiment with viruses to create something approximating a bioweapon in the Wuhan Institute, um, commissioned by the Chinese Communist Party. I believe that the timing of the epidemic slash pandemic um, <sighs> coincided with the timing that Trump had been hammering the Chinese economy hard. And I'm trying not to speak in metaphors, but I say it literally. The tariffs and uh, all the other penalties that, that Trump um installed, put in place uh, against China to make it more of a, a balanced economic situation, I would say, balanced. Uh, but China didn't see it that way. China saw it as an attack <clears throat> and thus released the greatest weapon of biological warfare that they've ever done. Um, the COVID-19 weapon that they used was designed to cripple economies, which is what happened. Uh, and the specific target was the United States of America. <clears throat> now, moving beyond that, the mainstream media, or at least some of them, are beginning to accept the fact that this thing was heavily concealed um, and I don't want to give them too much credit because of course they lack courage to do anything approximating truth um, but I've been reading and I've been hoping I've been hoping that um, say the people of the United States are not blind the people of the world are not blind um, Many are aware of China's effort to conceal the origin of the virus and the happenstance of how it came about and where exactly it, it came from. There was a deliberate effort to conceal that information from people that could do something about it and then give information to, say, the world, to the public that would greatly benefit them and reduce the amount of casualties and infected um, that it should have been that way. Even withholding information from the WHO, whom China has already bought, uh, shows me that they have little or no concern for the well-being of the people of this earth and that their hope was to destroy as many lives as possible um, 
simultaneously destroying economies and weakening, weakening nations worldwide. Um, and he, even going as far to attack their own partners, I might add. Um, their allies, even people who were <laughs> operating in their interest. And they still attacked us using this virus. Um, what I want to remember at this point is that the amount of censorship that went on and politi politicalization of this virus was never to this degree as great as it was regarding this thing. I went through the trouble of studying previous viruses uh, and their effect upon the human race, like uh, AIDS or the bubonic plague. Um, these viruses um, claimed many more times the lives of COVID. Um, many, many more times. And uh, I want to create sort of a something like a comparison. In that time, the world lacked the social infrastructure they have now to control public opinion. And I believe that the people who were operating in that time were less malevolent than the ones that we know today, less inclined to, say, treason or treachery. Uh, and that's because the power of money today is so strong. Um, China continues to try to make war quietly. They continue to annex quietly parts of international territory, international waters and territory of other sovereign nations. They make efforts to undermine and subvert the United States, despite claiming that they want peace, which, of course, they don't. All their actions actions suggest that they want to make war, and they intend to make war. There is a lot of information I've been reading about China improving their nuclear strike capability, their capability of destroying aircraft carriers or fleets of the United States, and that the fleet patrolling the Pacific or fleets patrolling in the Pacific are in grave danger at this moment of a missile attack or any sort of destructive, mass destructive event that would cripple those fleets and thus give China complete autonomy in the region. Um, I believe it is the sacred duty of the United States to take it upon themselves to join the efforts of Japan, Australia, and India to prevent Chinese expansionism in that area uh, because their ambition knows no bounds. And if their ambition knows no bounds, uh, they'll never stop unless they meet opposition and they're pushed back. So Biden, as I see it, is too weak and too incompetent of a leader to be called the real commander in chief of the United States. Um, and the evidence I have to support this is all over the Internet. Uh, in any speech that you see him conducting without something that isn't pre-written. Um, There is a grave danger in the United States that they face. China is not going to give up trying to destroy the Americans. And so because Biden has already proven himself to be a talking piece of the Democrat Party, which takes its orders from from China, whether they'll admit it or not. Um, even if not, they're either receiving a payout or they're fundamentally against the United States, one or the other. Both are treasonous acts. Um, everything that's been happening is 
like a paradox, I might, I might say, um, where the rule of law no longer applies, but it applies only if those are, there are those that are willing to enforce it. Um, rationality or circumstantial things don't matter. Um, I see it everywhere. People being arrested for not masking, even if they have a mask exemption. People being enforced to mask when they're outside, even though there's so much data saying that COVID is killed by sunlight. That's unanimously affect uh, that that is unanimous unanimously accepted by the scientific community, and yet um, there's so much contrary advice contradictory advice um, that was designed to create pseudo-truths and confusion. So I may say that what they were aiming at is to create disorientation and untruth, if I may put it like that, amongst everybody. If the United States can come together, if they can undo what's been done um, that would be the first steps would be to first prove that the election was frauded in the first place and restore the true commander in chief of, of the nation um, and Biden must be found mentally incompetent for duty and though Harris would not <laughs> fall under that criteria, say, because she's not of old age, um, she should be found of treason because what she's proposing is the same treasonous thing that AOC um, or Ilan Omar is proposing, which is completely contradictory to U.S. interests and U.S. national security or any kind of protection for the country. It stands in the face of that. It stands contradictory to that. Um, they support the end of the, the, you know, continuing the border wall to protect the southern border. Uh, despite everything that Trump said and that was proven after he left office by the incompetence of the Biden administration, um, Trump's stance on illegal immigrants and the addition of the border wall and much more security and protection and, and border guards and what did, I, I can explain it very quickly um, deterred, successfully deterred any more people trying to cross into the border or at least a majority of them let's not forget about the tunnels that they use to, to get into the US but I mean, the most obvious point of access was blocked. Um, and now the Biden administration has essentially taken apart the entire infrastructure and abandoned it. So what happened? Hundreds of thousands came across the border illegally. Children being locked up, people being affected with COVID because they're put in camps together, too close to each other, and inhumane, inhospitable conditions. Little children, I've seen pictures of it. Um, everything that this administration, Biden's administration, has done is a catastrophe. Uh, the war in the Middle East right now, um, the war between Israel and Gaza, the fact that Russia is expanding back into Ukraine, uh, the, the, the war in, in the Pacific, um, everything he's done has undermined the United States' position, and thus the world has fallen out of balance again. So the solution is restore Trump to office. I don't know if they can do it by election because the last election was frauded, so I don't know how it can be, but there must be a dismissal from office um, of Biden and of Harris, and I mean, The traitors within America 
need to be punished. They need to be arrested, rounded up, and put in prison forever. Uh, there needs to be a severe, severe reckoning upon the people that live in the so-called swamp. Uh, and those are the ones that I deeply believe have been corrupted by China one way or another. It doesn't matter which party it is bipartisan. There is corruption inside the Republicans as there is corruption inside the Democrats. The only difference is that the Democrats are fully declared for the enemy, let's say. And the Democrats are in shadow for the enemy. So... I have hope because the election, there are election committees being put together and that have been working to try to account for the fraud. Um, unfortunately, it's too little too late because there is already tons of evidence, tons of evidence that has been destroyed since the election took place. Um, and there has been plenty of months that have passed between in which the Democrats have cleverly buried and destroyed evidence um, that was found by the Trump team, by several witnesses, several thousand witnesses that testified to the fraud. Um, and at which point they were all ignored um, by the traitors in the Supreme Court and by many, many others that stood as a safeguard in office. Uh, that were unwilling or too cowardly to act at that moment. Um, so the result was that the Chinese Communist Party was laughing at the United States. Um, in the House, Black Lives Matter and Antifa create confusion and division and keep people fighting for a cause that they don't know really what it is, but what they perceive it to be. And whilst at the same time creating mass rioting, destruction of property, murder, um, assaults, police looking the other way because it's supposed to be politically correct, which is an unexcusable lie in order to protect from any obstruction to the force of rioting. But then again, um, there have been arrests made already within that group. Um, and of course, there are people that have founded that group um, who are now distancing themselves from that group because it doesn't represent the interests in which they thought. Um, I can't remember the co-founder's name of Black Lives Matter, but I know that he's left. Pardon me, she has left. Um, so, people seem to be naive before about these issues, but as I understand it now, many, many people have turned against them because they are beginning to realize that it's not exactly what it seems. And there's mass hypocrisy within the movement itself that shows that it's not actually for the betterment of black people. Um, black Lives Matter doesn't necessarily even mean that they support the black race in America or abroad or anywhere. It might not even mean referring to the black race itself. It's just a slogan invented to steamroll anybody in their path. And a slogan that because of political correctness, um, blindness, I would rather call it, um, and cowardice, because it ends any kind of discussion or debate on the matter. It's just it's, it's something that they, they throw in your face. Um, there's nothing more to analyze it to what they actually mean. And the movement created a bunch of fanatics and violent people. I wouldn't say that they created, they created some, but there were actually agents embedded in that 
group that fully intended to destabilize the nation as, as best that they could. And you saw the attacks on the Capitol building. Uh, John Sullivan was arrested for instigating the rioting and then taking money from the press to sell a fake story so that they could show that the Trump supporters who were actually trying to prevent the Capitol attacks and peacefully protest um, were then used as the patsy, so to speak, because of the, the lies told by Antifa um, to try to create violence and to make it violent. I hope that, and I'll conclude with this, I hope that Trump is restored to his position as Commander-in-Chief, as President of the United States because of the incompetency and fraud of this administration, the Biden administration. They cheated America to get into power. They, now that they're in power, have done everything in their power to undermine the interests of the United States in every way, uh, to weaken her, to make her susceptible to, to enemies surrounding. Um, and I don't know why under Obama this thing was, uh, was tolerated, but I presume it was because he had the support of the black, the black race majority or minority or whatever, where they were. Um, and I know of many Blacks that were discontented with his performance as a president, um, but wouldn't say anything about it when those that would. Uh, so it's not about race or anything of that issue. It's about the competency of that president and what he did during his administration is exactly what we have now. Um, it is the lack of interest to protect the United States, to protect her people, to protect her interests, to protect peace in this world, uh, and to be on your guard for enemies of that peace. So, I believe that it's the sacred obligation and the duty of the United States to essentially take back its authority, its position as a superpower to keep the world in balance. It's an imperfect, imperfect, but uh, it's the best that we've got because free democracy in the West is the best that we've got. And it's worth preserving, it's worth protecting. Um, it's been undermined in, in every way that, that I can see. Um, there are those that are deeply jealous of what we have and whom, because of the Marxist narrative with a twist to become postmodernism, um, have turned our own people against us in order to break down society to build one in their place, which they think will be better, but I guarantee you it will not be. There is no... There is no proof on earth that those that believed in that utopian theory of communism or Marxism or postmodernism that ever amounted to success in any way, contemporary or is historically said or any, nothing. Communism has failed wherever it was implemented, resulting in the deaths of their own people, no matter what country, what culture, it didn't matter. So there are so many things to try to summarize into one small video that I could make to try to remember. But um, all I know is that in our time, censorship was extremely strong. Censorship of all public opinion, except the grand narrative that they accepted, that they're trying to sell people a lie, a propaganda. I classify it as... as a lie that is designed to control the narrative and cloud people's judgment and common sense, um, delegitimize all media. Nobody elected them. 
They're not in authority over us and they have no right to control what information they deem permissible or not. All information is permitted. Let the community, let the public decide what information that they want to believe. Well, it's not so cut and dry as that, but let's just say that untruth in our time is the way of the land, so to speak. We've been accepting a massive lie about this pandemic, this epidemic, starting with its origins, starting with uh, how to deal with it. There's been so much untruth, so much misinformation, so much lies told by the government who was, who told them to say that? Uh, that's the question I ask. Fauci, I hope that Fauci gets what's coming to him. I hope that he's put in prison for the rest of his life um, because the act of treason should be punished in such a way. Death is way, way too easy. There are so many things worse than death. And I would say that letting him rot in a prison in the infirmary for forever, let, let him rot in jail. The traitors of America need to be taught that betraying America itself is a grave, grave penalty. And I've already seen so many of these traitors escape punishment. At least they never went to prison. And I don't understand why. It is so blatantly obvious that they committed treason. They've killed their own brothers. They've, they've, they've killed others. They've murdered for power. Um, They've corrupted in the name of power. Such things cannot go unanswered, unpunished. Um, I refer to, of course, Clinton and the Benghazi situation. That sort of thing should have landed her in prison forever. And um, I'm sure many Americans still remember it, but there's nothing that can be done. They're very, very, very good lawyers, and they have a team of patsies around them to take the fall in case they should ever be incriminated. In school, you're taught you can change the world, but as I see it, they want you to think that so that you continue chasing pie in the sky and you're not realistic about responsibility or the, the, the responsibility you bear as an individual to do rightly uh, in your own life and to be careful about making vast judgments about what can be done and what should be done, especially what should be done. Um, that's why Jordan Peterson is the antidote um, because he keeps preaching about building up the individual, building up yourself, your character, your morality, your your strength. Um, do something courageous. Do something something for the the the, the goodness of of yourself to to build up yourself. He kept focusing on on the individual. Too many people have been let's say, radicalized um, into thinking that that's why they pursue nonsensical interests like climate change or, or that divisive movements that we keep hearing about that are just designed as a distraction but don't actually achieve anything except division and animosity between the sexes or different groups Anybody that doesn't see that hasn't been paying attention to what was the result of their efforts. All of those things have been designed to split us, to fragment us into different groups and not to see individual competence or value anymore. The value is to be placed on group identity, identity politics and all this nonsense.
I would say that we should talk like preachers and, and act as though we are all under God. But free will is part of what we have. We are free to create. We are also free to destroy ourselves. So it's up to a person to decide which one they're going to reach for. The capacity for human destruction has been heavily exploited already. It's called the First and Second World War. It's called Communist China under Mao. So enough of this. Instead of trying to destroy what we've got, what little we've got, why don't we try building instead? Those who are in oppose to building, they never say it. They actually use the same words that I'm speaking now. They say that they're the ones who are building. But when you look at the result of their work, they're destroying and dividing and dividing and, and, and causing confusion wherever they go. So let's not be so naive as to trust in something like that even if they, they use fancy words and sentiment and compassion as the reason for their destruction so that we turn a blind eye and we say, oh, we can trust those people. Let's not. Let's not elect them to the position of leadership or office. Let's get them out. When they talk about Marxism or communism, let's arrest those people and put them behind bars, not make them political leaders or give them any kind of influence. Because no matter what, as I see it, they are enemies of free democracy and free society. They don't want to give you any kind of right to speak. And the COVID pandemic has only solidified my belief that that's what they were after in the first place, totalitarianism, obviously. No freedom of speech, no freedom to, 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 to fight back. Ban all your firearms in the name of public health and safety. They use these mass generalizations to overreach power, and they use the fear of the public to justify that power. So... The more the mass media can make a, a heyday out of COVID, the more people that they can scare, the more viewership they can gain, the more the government puts money in their pockets. And also if they can cover up when a politician fumbles once in a while. It's an imperfect world. I weep because there's no justice for the real criminals of this earth and i don't understand why they seem to grow to a ripe old age and die of natural causes i don't understand it i don't get it um, but again it's an imperfect world and we have to try to make it better within our own lives so I urge whoever sees this video, keep your head about you. Don't buy into the grand narrative that public media, that, that government media that has obviously been bought and who is so deeply biased, they wouldn't know the truth if they saw it. Take back America, please. I think it's too late for Canada. Communism has already taken its root here very well. <laughs> I used to be partisan. I used to believe in the Conservative Party, but now I see um, the Conservative Party is nothing but a name. It doesn't mean conservatism any more than the name liberal does. What it means is that we're going to stay in power by hook or by crook. And we'll say whatever we have to say and talk however we have to talk. The real conservatives in the federal government are being suppressed by their own party members. There is one decent man that I know of in the conservative party, and that's Pierre Polyev. 
and even by his own leadership, has lost his position of authority, but not his audience. He continues to be more publicly known and popular than the entire Conservative Party publicity combined. So, those that are not him, of course. Um, I just don't have much hope for Canada. I don't. I see protesting all over the country against the COVID-19 uh, nonsense, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Canada has allowed itself to be corrupted for a very long time, and the enemies of this country are not wasting time. Uh, they carefully line everything up nicely to get everything in their favor. But what they don't realize is when they've achieved their dream, uh, Canada will not exist anymore. I mean, the name Canada, the country Canada will still exist on paper, maybe. But uh, the dream that Canada is a free uh, 